Hello one and all, I'm Chris, and today we are going to figure out how to make a ARK Survival Evolved server. Just to say ahead of time, any links I use in this to help make the server, I will include in the description for ease of use. For starters, we're going to need Steam CMD. This will help us update the server when we need to, as well as download it in the first place. So to do that, just scroll down the page a little downloading Steam CMD. They have different versions here for Windows and Linux. I suppose they have an OS X also. If anyone uses that, we're using Windows in this video though. So just gonna click on that. You'll see the download pop up. Make sure to save it to a location you know where to find it. Then we are going to hop over to our page here. Now with Steam CMD downloaded, we will just need to extract the files. I recommend just extracting it to a folder, because when you use this, it's going to make a whole bunch of files, like 3 gigs of them, so it is good to keep it in a folder. Now with that out of the way, you can just toss that. We now have our Steam CMD folder, and we're just going to launch Steam CMD. It'll check for updates first. I believe the link on the wiki page is old, so it usually does do an update. At least fuse that link. I'm sure there's other ones that have the actual updated version. I'll just skip through this because this is going to take a second since it's a few gigs. Now with Steam CMD updated, uh, if you closed it out at all, like I have here, you just reopen it again. You don't have to do that, but you can. Now, we need to get all the files for the ARC server itself. So we're going to use the commands right here that I have. So for starters, we're going to need to do login anonymous. This puts you on the Steam CMD public server, pretty much. Make it simple to understand. Now, this is actually making us download the server itself. Force install. There. And now this part will be the file location. As you can see down here, I have a file, a file path laid out. You want to type that exactly? I'm pretty sure if you have spaces in there, it'll just instead make it arc only. I forget how that works out exactly, but I'm going to see if I do it right. Either way, this just makes sure that you have it on a file path, and it'll be on your desktop so you know where all the files are that you downloaded. Also, since arc is a pretty big game itself, this is going to be a few gigs. This, uh, this whole server file is like 10 gigs, so if you don't have the space for it, keep something like that in mind. Desktop, and now we're going to do arc server. I'll just make it one word, see if that helps. Yeah, there it is. You can see right over here it says arc server. And now that we have the base files for this force install there, we're going to make everything good and updated. This is the full long part. I'm going to skip over the loading process since it will take a little bit. So bear with me. Validate. But after this is done, you can exit the program. So when I skip out of this, we're going to get right into our next part. Now that you've downloaded everything you need for your ARC server, we're going to hop in to the folder. As you can see, we got a whole bunch of files in here now. If you look through the shooter game folder, then go to binaries. Then go to Windows 64 here, Win64, you'll see your shooter game server application right here. 
Now, instead of just using that, we're going to create a bat file. So we are going to use the bat file to open that program. Arc server. So I'm going to open this right here, and again I'm going to bring up some little notes for the next steps we're going to need to do. So the scripts that we're going to need to run for this bat file is as follows. We have start the path to our shooter game.exe. Then you have your map. You can change this if you want to use a different map. You can make it the center, Ragnarok, etc. As long as you have those downloaded so you can actually access them when you launch the server. We have server name here. I'm just going to name it. Land fee YouTube server. Then we have server password. Gonna name it something simple like YouTube. Then we have an admin password. I'll just name it myself, Chris. Why not? Then you have one of the most important parts of a server, the ports. We're using port 777, and then Shory port 27015. Max players you can set in here as well. Just for this video, since it doesn't matter too much, I will just make the max players 5. Now these are simple settings. You'll be able to do more advanced settings later in this video. I'll show those off. But this is just the basic startup for the server. We're going to just save this under all files and save it with the file extension .bat. Save that. And now as you can see we have the scripts right here ready to run. Now we can start that up right away if we want, though we're going to try and take care of the port forwarding right away so we don't have to worry about that. Now as you see over here, I have some notes telling us firewall ports. Some might not be sure what that is, though you can find your firewall settings over here, control panel, system and security, windows firewall. Then through advanced settings, you get the window that looks much like this. This should look similar, even if you're not using Windows 7. It should look somewhat like this. We want to go to inbound rules, and we're going to create a new rule. And as you see here, we have different settings we can select. I'm going to select port. Then we're going to go over. We're going to start with TCP. As you can see here, TCP. So at the specified port location, move this over here more, and see it still. We're going to make 27020. Go over to next. Allow the connection. You can take off the domain. You're probably not going to be using Corbett domain anyways, but we want it private and public because the intention is to make this go online rather than just have it local only. We'll just name this Arc Server just to make it simple. You don't need a description in there. And we have to make three other ports also. This is forwarding it through our firewall also rather than only our modem just because Arc has a few problems with this kind of stuff, so it's good to make sure that the firewall has it as an exception. So we're going to do UDP now. And we're going to use 27015. Allow the connection again. Check off domain. Arc server 2. 
simple. Then just keep on repeating until you're done with the list. Seven, seven, seven. Seven. Allow connection. Check off that. Dark server three. Then last one. Seven, 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 eight. Allow connection. Check off domain. Arc server four. Now we have all four of these right here. We can exit out of this now. Now, for here, I want to keep this up because we have to make shootergame.exe public and private. To do that, we want to, get, we want to go to allow a program or feature through Windows, Windows Firewall. We're going to want to change settings. Now all we need to do is scroll down to find our program. As you can see, here it is, shootergameserver.exe. We want private and public checked. If it's not checked, just recheck it. I already had this checked because I already set it up once, though usually they don't have public selected, so make sure that both of these are check marked, and you'll just go OK. And that is done with now. Now we're going to need to forward the ports on the router using 777 and 27015. To do that, if you've seen any of my other videos, we first need to make sure what our IP address is for local connections. So, what is important to connect to the router is to know your default gateway. So to start this out, we're going to type in the command on the command prompt as ipconfig. And if you didn't notice, I use this to get to the command prompt. To actually get this on the run bar, you just type cmd, or you can type command. And it should come up right away, just so you can see it there. I almost forgot to say that. But yeah, when you actually have the command prompt up, Type in ipconfig, hit enter. Now once you've hit enter on ipconfig, you'll get something much like this. You want to go down to default gateway and follow the path. There should be two numbers under the path. You want the one, you want the second number, and to write that down, you'll be using that in your web browser to access your router's website. As well, you want to write down the IPv4 address. This is your local address that you'll need to port forward the ports. I will block these out. You'll already see that ahead of time, but anything that shows my IP address, I'm just going to block out for privacy sake. Just a heads up. Now, once we've entered the default gateway into our web browser, You'll come up to your cable modem or modem, router, etc. website, which lets you access different settings for your router or modem. You want to find some kind of advanced settings. As you can see from me, I have an advanced settings tab. And down here, I go to forwarding. And now I have a port forwarding section. For this, I already have port 27015 already forwarded because Unturned and Gary's Mod both use that, so I already have it up and ready to go. Now we're going to create a new port forward though because we don't have 777 in here, so I'm going to type in my IP address, my local IP address at that, keep in mind. Once you have that typed in, then you can type in your port that you want forwarded. And for us, that is 7777. I think I keep accidentally adding more sevens when I'm saying that. But you know what I mean. We're just going to name it ARC. And we want to enable this port and apply it. 
Now that that's all done, we have both these ports forwarded. Now we're going to bring back up our ARC server. And that means we can finally launch our server now. So we're going to just double click on ARC server. It's going to run the script, then bring up the actual server console. Now, as you can see here, the server is fully running now. Command line script is just running through. Make sure that we're starting up with the right settings. You can turn off battle eye if you want. Tells you right here. That's something you don't like. You can go ahead and turn that off in your script settings, etc. Though, to change more advanced server settings, if you want to, just make sure to go back to go back to the shooter game folder, go into saved, go over to config here, your Windows server. You have game reuser settings. This will show you all the settings for the game. You can adjust experience that you get, collection rates, all that kind of stuff. Over here, as you can see, we have server settings. This lets you add or change anything you've already put in. You can change maps from here, you can change server passwords, server names. All you would have to do is just hit enter, make sure that you have the right command in there, hit equals, etc. People can use that as they see fit. There's a whole list of commands on the wiki page if you need to use it. As well, you can make the bat file run all those commands too to do it automatically. If you just want to start with all those settings right away rather than having to adjust everything. Now for this next part, I'm just going to show that the server is actually working. If you go to your LAN connections over here, you should see your server pop up in there right away. So if you want to check, you can go over to your unofficial connections. The server that's connected by LAN should come up like this. It just shows you that your server is running online. You should be all good then. Oops. I also have both the local and online connection favorited. You can tell that they're different connections based on the ping. You go over to your LAN connections, you'll see that the LAN connection always is lower. Though just for the sake of doing it, we're going to use the actual internet connection to join up. Type in that password we made. YouTube, accept it. Now when you're friendly connected to your server, you can get the message of the day in there. I set that up myself already, so that's why that came up. Uh, and just FYI, if you're playing the game while running your server on the same computer like I am right now, you'll probably notice some performance issues. The game was finally a bit more optimized, so it's not too terrible. So if you're just trying to like run a server with like five people, like how I have this one set up, then you'll probably be fine. But if you're trying to run a server with like 20 people or more, you'll probably want a computer just to be running the server, and then another computer to be running the actual game. <laughs> now, simple thing I feel like I should mention, if you have yourself uh, if you have admin permissions, a simple way to get to the admin control panel on this, change things like the message of the day, all you have to do is get up your console, you can type, you can hit the tab button to bring that up, then all you need to do is type in show my admin manager. Oh, I. <laughs> I forgot the most important part. Enable. Cheats. My name. Now it should work. 
Admin Manager. Yeah, there we go. Since I typed in an admin password, I had to enable cheats first before I could bring this up. That pretty much is like uh, OP OPing yourself in Minecraft as an example. But yeah, from here you can adjust settings as you want. See the server info. You can't really mess with this stuff too much unless you want to start using cheats. You can, however, make sure to whitelist players, kick, ban them as you please. You can change the message of the day if you want. All you have to do to make sure that this goes through is YouTube. Then hit refresh. It'll pop up there. I'm not sure why I don't have like an apply thing. So it's refreshed, so that's kind of weird. But just make sure you have all that stuff there. And from here you can use all these cheats a lot easier than having to type in the console commands. Now that I've showed you that, I'm just going to go back to the browser really quick. I don't have any friends right now to come on to here to demonstrate that it is connected online. So I will just use a website to show that working. So I'm just going to throw it back over there. And just to make sure you all know that it was actually online, you can also use a site like this. This is called Battle Metrics. <laughs> Battle Metrics, I guess. You can go to Arc Survival Evolve servers and search up your own server, and you can see the status for it, as well as the IP address to connect to it, if you use direct connections, etc. As well, just to say again, it doesn't really update anything on the server log, so it doesn't really help you that much. So it's good to use this this kind of site if you want to make sure that your server is actually being seen as online. And that is how you make an Arc Survival Evolved server. Thank you guys for watching. Also, just to mention before I close out, you don't have to write down shutdown or anything for this. You can just exit out of it, turn it off, and you're all good. Thanks again, guys. Catch you later.